Hello there. Hi. Welcome back to the stream. <laughs> to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I did not get the stream last night because my alarm did not go off for some reason. So I slept all through it. And then I woke up and I said, oh, that's bad. <laughs> I missed a night. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but we're back. More Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Sleep at night's a great thing. Not for me. I work night shifts, so I have to stay up at night. But that doesn't matter because even when I go to work, I find a little alcove. And like, I have like a pile of cardboard that I just lay on and go to sleep. <laughs> Phoenix Wright is exactly what I need right now. It's what I wanted. It's what I wanted. I fucking... What I, you know what? We're here at Phoenix, right? But recently, I fucking, I was like, okay, it's been a year. I need to start playing Final Fantasy XIV again. By the way, hello, welcome guys, welcome Shark, welcome Greg. Hope everything's going well with you guys. I was like, I have to go back to Final Fantasy XIV, get ready for that uh, new expansion coming out sometime in fall and while I'm doing this guess I'll level up every job in the fucking game like an idiot I hate black mage <laughs> I hate black mage so bad hey SP how's it going almost time to case three and four is short oh four is a short okay all right yeah yeah if we can I would like to finish this before Resident Evil Resident Evil 8 comes out speaking about that I don't think I'm gonna be I don't I don't do I stream Friday night? No, I don't stream Friday nights. I stream Friday mornings. Uh, so when Resident Evil 8 comes out, uh, will I be able to do that on on release day? I think I should. I think I should be able to do that on release day. We should be able. What am I playing? I'm playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, where we get to be an Ace Attorney, a lawyer of the just. Yeah, that's right. I said it all freaky like. Anyways. When we last left off, when we last left off, we just, we just threw Armstrong out of the witness stand, and now we're throwing Mr. Tigata in there, because he's a phony, like the guy from Family Guy, he's like, he's a phony, a big fat phony, but now, we're gonna throw the fucking book at him, <laughs> in my RE trader boy, what are you playing? <laughs> When I was a kid, Case 4 kept me up at night, so that would be good for you. I still think about Case 4 from the first one. I really like it. I really like it. I think about that in the ending of the last game. I love Francesca. I hope, oh my god, I better see her by this game. <laughs> it seems like Case 4 is always like something to grab you. It's like a mainstay of the series now. Been breezing through the case? Really? I've been, I've been breezing through the case? Me. Mr. fucking 125 IQ over here, who somehow manages to stare at the screen on basic, on basic, uh, interrogation logic. I've been breezing through the case? I don't believe it. <laughs> They're just bad at the game. I think I'm bad at the game. Alright. January 8th, 1.21pm. Oh, by the way, before we start. Almost forgot, before we start. Oh, little space invaders. Yay. <laughs> Almost forgot. Recently, uh, last stream, we were able to get the new emotes up. So, for those who are, for those who want to know, the emotes, the emo, all of them, both of them should be available via the channel points if you have them. You shouldn't have to sub for them, right? But if you want to sub, that'll be nice. If you want to sub, that will help us get more slots for more emos down the road. But also importantly, if you do not have the BTTV extension on your desktop, please go get it. Because then you get access to our lovely animated... Why did I click that button? Our lovely animated Chad Wellington emote. I love him. Look at him. Look at him go. <laughs> get Fireflow as Shark is showing. That's the orgasm one. That's the one with the Ahego face. And then, because I had no other where I there's no other uh one tier slot in the tier two slot, there's Pearl Patine. 
the secret mastermind of everything in our lives. <laughs> but moving on from there. All right. January 8th, 121 p.m. District Courtroom Defense Lobby. Number one. So we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case won now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what Tiger had told him to do. But Godot picked up on it, remember? Court music starts playing. <laughs> Things get serious. He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if the... We don't know if what he testifies the truth. Do you mean, you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? Of course he was lying, that's all he was doing. I don't know. But if that's the line of the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that we don't have the case-making evidence we're gonna need. Hey, pal. Hey, Gumshoe, how's it going? What are you so jumpy about, detective? Your hair's standing on end. Hey. That's the that's the pot calling the kettle black, little Miss Top Knot. It's not a top knot. It is a top knot. <laughs> Never mind about the hair, just calm down, alright? I I can't stand still when I just don't have a job to do. I kinda get worked out. No kidding. You gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Well, um Hey. I'm gonna take a jog back down the precinct. I could get some prints analyzed for you if you got an hour. That'll be nice, fucking take the bottle. An hour? The trial will have re reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have any real decisive piece of evidence, right? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. Gadot's call out was so well timed to everybody. <laughs> call Maya top knot. <laughs> She is a top knot. I call Maya the devourer of worlds. Because that's all she does is steal and eat things. You said you could get some fingerprints analyzed done in an hour. You bet. In that case. Would you mind checking the prints on this for me? There you go. If you're going back to the station anyways, could you find whose prints these are? Oh, hey. That's a small bottle I gave you back this morning, right? Yep. I think it's time we saw the last mystery of whose fingerprints are on this thing. There you go. Sure thing, pal. I'm making up words as I go. Making up words as I go. <laughs> sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been that's been gnawing at me too. Gawing. That's not a word. Gnawing is the word. It has a G though, because English is fucking stupid. Okay, I'll get this off. I'll get this off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. It's her job to be shady. Yeah, her job to be shady. Her quote unquote job, because I'm definitely paying her. I'm so not paying her. <laughs> Everybody's broke. This is pretty much the final showdown, I guess. It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys. January 8th, 1, 56 p.m. District Courtroom number 4. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Gadot, did you find Firo? Firo? I keep saying Firo. Furia? Furia? Firo Tigera? I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job, no problem. Tamed him? The guy's name might be Furio. Furio? Oh god. So is this supposed to be like Fury Tiger? Is that what it's supposed to be? Furio Tiger. But come on. It's pretty lively. Be careful. He still bites. She's the one paying for the office, not being really? Like, for real? <laughs> like, are we serious here? Wait, what money? They don't have money over in her village. Nah, she's broke. Very well. Please show Mr. Tiger to the stand. Mr. Iron Tiger. Um, witness? Please state your name. Oh, God. What the fuck? <coughs> Oh my god, for some reason, like... You know that feeling you get, like, in the back of your throat? When, like, you swallow and it don't feel right? Fuck, that's what's happening to me right now. I gotta take a drink of my water. Holy shit. Oh my god, I don't know why the fuck that's happening right now. I don't like it. 
<laughs> Fly and death noises. What? Don't hide under the table, Maya. Unless there's room down there for me, too. I, uh... What? What's your mind? What'd you say to me? N nothing. I didn't say nothing. Honest. Oh, now he's speaking slang. Who would have guessed that fear wouldn't induce a bad Brooklyn accident to the judge? I got business to take care of. You hear me? So, who the hell called me to this hole? Was it you, Spikey? No, of course not. It was the Joe. Your Honor. Oh dear, I, I seem to have dropped my pin. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me, just carry on with the proceedings as normal. He was so gone, he was so out of there. Talked about this already, that they pay for the office with Maya's allowance. Huh, really? I find it hard to believe. From what allowance though, like from, from her village? She, does, she can't get paid, she can't get paid that much. <laughs> the judge hides too. Welcome bats. How's it going? I sound like Joker now. Welcome bats. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse, Batman. I sprang a trap. <laughs> and you sprang gloriously. Alright, that's it. We're doomed. Maybe you just didn't hear me. I said who the hell was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout. There's no need to scream and shout and let it all out. <laughs> we can hear we can all hear you. Would you say? There's no point struggling. You're caught in the snare. The relentless snare of the law. And I'm the one that hauls you in. Hmm. Too cool. Don't let him get the better of you, Nick! <laughs> Let's start with the bases. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mass boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas. Of course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder from under the table. Love Godot's theme. I love it too. It's awesome. Hmm. Phoenix Wright. You was the one who set this up, didn't you? You was gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Oh, <laughs> he's like, guys, ladies and gentlemen of the courtroom, I just shit it myself. <laughs> Get a grip, Nick. First day of the investigation, we talked about this. Really? I just find it hard to believe. They're so broke in that village. No one goes there. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Well, that's a lie. Spent all my time in the office. I got whales line. Whales? I got whales line. Okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I got whales lined up to borrow cash from Tinder Lender every single day. You just want to check my alibi? Just go as Violet. I wish. You know what I? You know what I imagine him with the voice of? Do you guys know the four kids voice actor for Sanji for One Piece? That thick ass Brooklyn accent. You know, he's like, yo, Steve. <laughs> I love that voice so much. I love it. Ah, at last, I found my pen. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Your cross examination. What is this? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Please. Witness, if you can refrain from shouting out like that. Joey from Yugi. Hey, Yug. Yeah, Joey. Yo, remember how Tristan had, like, such a bad fucking voice actor until, like, one episode? And then they started going like, yeah, we can actually pay for a voice actor for him now. I know I know these kind of games that guy's in the blue play. That low life ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid- wait, what? He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. Low life? Me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me some ding, what some ding? Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to the case, I'm gonna bill you fifty thousand dollars, and you's gonna borrow the cash from me. Huh? That's one long contract I refuse to sign. I don't think it's gonna hurt when you tangle with the tiger. 
never saw Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh my god. Honestly, the four. I love. Listen, we all know Four Kids isn't that great, but there are some things from Four Kids that you love. One Piece, you love. Yu-Gi-Oh, you love. But god damn it, you check the you check the English dub of Yu-Gi-Oh episode one. You're like, oh, they're just playing cards. You check the Japanese version, the original. Fucking, they're playing a children's game and the pharaoh's just sending people to the shadow realm. Left and right, burning people alive. It's crazy. Dropping them from buildings. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I love a good specter sport. Spectator sport. Just a moment. And that's really not. This witness is... How can I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle? Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You just better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split, if I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. Yu-Gi-Oh! Zero goes crazy as hell. Exactly. The court will impose. I don't get Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh my god. I like Yu-Gi-Oh! Don't get me wrong. Well, not the new shit, but I like Yu-Gi-Oh! Don't get me wrong. But how we go from from like ancient card game pharaoh thing whatever to like bro here's my bike and i got a tattoo and now i'm the chosen one or some shit and i'm like what summon the dragon from the sky make the fucking sky turn red on oh, those kaiba's amazing mm, kaiba boy yes <laughs> i love pegasus i love his voice too it's so smooth the court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of the witness's testimony. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick! Come out from under the t Come out from under there already. What are you doing, Maya? Alright. No pressing. Hard evidence. Only the facts. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all my time in the office. I got whales lined up to borrow cash from Tinder Linda every day. You just want to check my alibi? Just ask Violet. All right. We really like the Egyptian ghost stuff. It is cool. It took them like, bro. It took them like a hundred episodes for like, like Joey and Taya to speak up and go like, "Hey, man, did you ever realize that like when Yugi plays plays the game, he gets like." His little short ass, like, what is he, like, four foot ten or something? He grows, like, a whole two inches. <laughs> Literally, the only thing you know about Yugi is that Kaiba made some... <laughs> Kaiba makes him kill himself, car. Oh, my God. Oh, man. The four kids version of Yu-Gi-Oh. Fucking... You, all right, so Kaiba has... I think it's Kaiba who sends out, like, you know, his agents from time to time or whatever. And, like... <laughs> There's a scene in the original where they bust in the room and they like point guns or whatever at somebody. But in the four kids version, they bust in the room and they just point their fingers. And the dude's like, one of the dudes like holding his, like he's holding his wrist with his other hand and his fingers out pointing at like the screen. It's so fucking crazy. It's so stupid. I love it so much. Also, at some point they went from like the cards being holograms and shit to like just being real monsters. I remember like a fucking bodyguard or something just totally gets eaten by the man-eating bug and i'm just like what the fuck just happened that guy's dead <laughs> kai was raw i love him kai was awesome i was tied up with business in december that's a lie i'm gonna do where is it where whoa where is it hold up whoa where's my evidence oh here it is ha huh. the witness statement is clearly faulty your honor I'm sorry, but I can- Oh, wait. Why did I do that? Now that I think about it, why did I do that? Hmm. I forgot that the calendar belonged to Glenn. My bad. <laughs> why did I do that? That was stupid. That was stupid of me. By the way, I totally forgot to say it. That was big brain move of me right there. I promise you, I promise you I have a high IQ point. Just, just sometimes I do stupid things. All right, so we can't press anything. We'll get a penalty apparently. 
Let's review the evidence first. Let's see. Sports paper, magazine, job listing, lunch, scooter, she John's lawn contract. Okay. Testimony, blueprints, optatsy photo, coffee, lottery ticket, stains, a bottle of potassium cyanide, victim's descriptions, on December 3rd, the day of the incident, says meet with the tiger. Now that they said not to press on later testimony, Godot and Tiger just become a comedic duo. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, really? That's awesome. MC Bomber, Millionaire, a bunch of weenies. Weenie Hut General! <laughs> One million dollar bill for surgery, matches at visiting Tinder Lender. Alright. Tied up with business in December last year, I spent all my time at the office. Got whales lined up, borrow cash from Tender Lender every day. Or check my alibi, go ask Violet. Alright. I mean, wouldn't the calendar still work though? Because it does say meet with the tiger. Everybody knows his nickname. I don't know nothing about no murder. I don't know nothing about that. Hmm. And that's like. Yeah, that's like the only thing we can do, right? Where'd the Weenie Hut thing come from? From Spongebob. <laughs> like, old school Spongebob. Old school Spongebob's the best Spongebob. Like, this new age shit? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It's just like a bunch of memes. It's kind of like the Powerpuff Girls, right? Where it's just like a bunch of memes now. And you're just like, oh. Where'd the, where'd the actual jokes go? Damn it. Hmm. Alright. You sure it's not the- you sure? I'm- what? Huh. Okay, well... It's not that. Oh, we also got victims. Uh, head of the company. Family. Daughter. CEO, Tiraspian, HDMI, HDMI, why did I say that? HMD. <laughs> Think you need to press? I need to press? Oh, so, alright. I get it. So, I can't press irrelevant statements, but I can. <laughs> Do I want to be a famous guy? Oh, yeah, totally. Pay big monies for big fame. So, I'm guessing I can press on statements that are relevant, and I won't get penalized, hopefully. Are you sure about that? Oh my god, that's something I say every time. Whenever whenever I have like a discussion with someone, they go like, I don't know nothing about that. And I go, you sure about that? <laughs> sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know? You see these teeth? That's, sh that's how sharp my security is. My security secretary? My bad. Sharp? Is he talking about Viola? Cadaverini. <laughs> Cause she, she fucking, she did the magic trick with death. Woof, just like that. She writes everything in my scheduler. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says, so that's where I was. That seems like a rather sketchy schedule. <laughs> there he goes again. Hmm. What the tiger did all December isn't that it isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. So now what? Press it harder. Mr. Tiger, what you want? Uh, if you wouldn't mind going in a bit more detail. That sounds annoying. No offense. Uh, this is a dead. This is a dead end, right? And you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December third. Where were you in the office that day? Well, where were you? Well, were you in the office that day, too? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. Not even to take a shower. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I ain't never seen the young kid before. I do believe the witness last statement was important. Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. Tiger, 
The court asks you to add the last statement to your testimony. Hmm. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a, <laughs> be a man. Be a man, your honor. And ask him yourself. The days you're talking about, I was in the office too. I never saw the kid. Oh yeah? That's a lie. Because if you never saw him, then how come he has it on his calendar? Mr. Tiger. You claim you didn't know Mr. Glen Elch. But it appears that Mr. Elch... Oh, fucking, I hate that name so bad. <laughs> it appears that he knew you. What? Mr. Elch left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. December 3rd? That's... The day of the murder. So, Mr. Tiger, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glenelg. One thing the judge is supposed to say, and Gadot has to say it. Because on the very day of the incident, you met with them. Not bad. He's actually not bad. Sorry? I was just messing with you. To see how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's not a compliment I can do with that's a compliment I can do without. Plus he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness. Please remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. Still don't know what's so difficult about Elg. Elg? Or whatever. <laughs> he said, but I'm not starting this shit. He's calling me a liar? Is that what you're doing? So you're saying that your saying that your claim to have never seen the kid before is the truth? I said I'm dead serious. He's better believe that's the truth. Hmm. Then I say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. <laughs> it's not. It's not that I can't say. It, it's that me like just pulling the name out as I see it is a little difficult for me. Just because I'm not used to it. Elg. Like, come on. <laughs> Who does that? Alright. That is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. Tiger. Oh, yes. Would you mind indulging the court witness? He never actually met the victim. That's gotta be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. And I'm not talking about in the sexual way, either. <laughs> I ain't no liar. I never met Glen Elg. Yeah, or whatever, fuck. God, it's, it's so hard to just... It's hard for me to just pull it out. There's a name I never hear. You don't put those letters and vowels together. It don't work like that. It's inhuman. There's some lame guy with the name, though. Wanted to borrow some cash from me. I set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tender Lender. I waited around for him, but he ain't ever showed up. I ain't never been to that Trespian joint, you see? He's lying. Get him. I see. That all seems perfectly logical. This seems perfect logic there. He said he hasn't been there. How could he possibly be there? I don't... I don't get it. <laughs> he had arranged to meet with the victim, but he did not show up. I heard his... I heard it pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Didn't I tell you I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take it the express train. That bill's going straight to you, right? Oh shit. I'm too broke for this. <laughs> All right. I ain't no liar. Never met him before. Some lame guy with the name though. Wanna borrow some cash from me. So I've been meeting with the guy in the office at Tenor Lender. Wait a rap for him to ever show. I ain't never been to no Trespian. That's a lie. You're a liar. You're a liar. If you're not a liar, then how come the smoke detectors are going off? Because your pants is on fire. You see that? Liar. Mr. Tiger, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. Huh? Have you really never been to Terespian before? What are the... What was the book of the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? 
He's been snooping around in my stuff now too? Wise guy. This guy. Everybody, get a little of this guy over here. What are you? My ball and chain? Ain't no ain't no broad controlling me. I'm not a broad. <laughs> I know I'm sexy, but come on. Order, well witness. I think it's time you started telling the truth, don't you? Sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me. I ain't no pussycat. I ain't no bit. Mama ain't raised no bitch now. <laughs> I don't go back on what I said. I'm about to die on this hill. But okay. I was at the joint that day. What? But listen good, alright? I might have been there, but I still ain't never met that kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet him that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. Hmm. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be, so I fucking skedaddled. I heard the cop sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. <laughs> He's capping. Get him. You think this is where the comedic duo goes ham? <laughs> oh, shit. I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end. Uh, I can't read. <laughs> you didn't actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it! If I wait around here any longer, I ain't gonna make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Huh. No problem. Anytime Trey presses you with something irrelevant, I'll see if he pays a penalty. Mr. Godot, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it! Yes, sir! The Special Express ain't cheap, right? Just so you know... No! Oh no, that's terrible. I'm so sorry. I hit my microphone and I hit the fucking... I hit the mute button. That's amazing what just happened there. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. That was... I was reading the whole time. <laughs> Oops! Fuck. <laughs> that's terrible. I feel bad now. Oh man, I was cracking jokes and everything. And now I can't repeat them because they're not going to be funny no more. Alright. Supposed to meet with the kid this afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out on the table, stiff as concrete. Figured in a place like that it was hot, so I biggity bounced. I heard the cop sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to the office. Dog bit me in the ass. Got me. <laughs> you didn't hear them, so it's worth a try. Yeah, but they were they were very contextual at the time. Take a sip of my iced tea. I got some iced tea here in the corner. Makes me feel great. But not the iced tea from Law and Order, though. I can't. I couldn't get him. He's not here. I wish he was. <laughs> wee woo wee woo. Hey Serena, how's it going? How's it hanging? Hope everything's great. Alright, so what the hell am I doing here? What? Alright, I have to press something. When I opened the door, join us in. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. About what? Precisely. 
I think I can press this. So the meeting wasn't uh, so the meeting wasn't due to take place at Tender Lender at all then. The kid was making a fuss about coming to the office. It always that it's always that way when I want to talk about repayments. Even though I got the even though I got the best punching bag you've ever seen in there, if there's any issues. Maybe it's because of the punching bag that people are scared to come. So that's why you decided to meet at Trespian. Huh. You're gonna you're going over old ground again, right? Sorry. You just earned yourself a penalty. Now struck it struck it down. You will be struck down. How come prosecution never gets penalty, huh? How about that? Let's talk about that for a moment, Your Honor. Come on. This is bullshit. Guy was laid out over the table, sip his concrete. I figured the place wasn't hot already. I was gonna, so I split. Heard the cop sirens on my way out, went back to the office. Alright, guess I can press this. Why would you split? Why would you get out of there? Because he's not the one doing the present. I don't care. He be pulling some bullshit himself sometimes. I should be I should be penalizing him. So you didn't actually set foot inside the restaurant then. The tiger is a busy cat. I don't hang around for no bun. No bun? Did I just say that? Well, for no one. I ain't got time to be caught. I've been no murder investigation. So, when exactly did you pick up the matches? There are matches just inside the front door. Our detective friend wound up in trouble with the, ch with the chef about taking five books home. Poor gumshoe. Also, well, enough to make a man cry. Okay, so that wasn't irrelevant. Phoenix had a witness for a change. Maybe that, maybe they would sp uh, slip up. Hmm. Okay. So that wasn't irrelevant to press. Or the cop signs on my way out, and I went straight back to the office. Hmm. Waiting for your parcels to arrive, like a dog at the door, just staring at the door, like it's coming at any moment now. What'd you order, if you don't mind me asking? Supposed to meet. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. Million dollar bill for surgery. Huh. Okay. Got it right on the nose. Alright, open the door, joint I saw was ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table stiff as concrete. Five thick books for your birthday as a gift to yourself. Ooh, wonderful. What type of books? What kind of books? I'm, I'm gonna assume they're all in like, they're all in like a series. Are the cop sirens on my way out? Uh, I guess I can press this, but eh, you know, fuck it. I, I got time. I can die. Who cares? You went straight back? Did a, did a bout of guilt suddenly hit you for what you did? What are you trying to say? You trying to tell you trying to tell me you ain't never been guilty of nothing? Uh We all have our crosses to bear. We all have to swallow the dark secrets we hide. Like this The courtroom's not exactly the place to talk about dark secrets, is it? It seems you've done it again, right? Oh fuck. Seems like I done what again. I ain't do nothing. I ain't did nothing, you ain't seen nothing did nothing. They're psychology books. Oh. Let's pretend I gave you one and let me say happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Alright. Psychology books. Hmm. The guy laid out over the table stiff as concrete. Give me detail on that, huh? What'd you see? You mean you saw Glenn's dead body? I guess I did, but I only saw him from behind. He was wearing some raggedy bit of cloth he called a hat. Alright, and what time was this? I don't know. Huh? You know what winds you know what winds me up more than anything else in the world? Watches. Round watches. I ain't gonna pollute my paws with some tacky hen henpecker? What? Alright. Out of interest, Mr. Tiger. What winds you up in the second most? Huh? What'd you think? Square watches. 
this guy for real? Look, all I need, all I need to know, all I needed to know was that something bad was going down in that place. So I got the fuck out of there. Be too much information, not sure, but reach that comes with the code with befriending failures. Hmm. Befriending failures. You mean like, don't mind me asking, you mean like, you have a hard time making friends? I don't, I don't get, I don't, I don't understand that term. <laughs> Befriending failures. Oh, huh. that's another one. Alright, well, fuck. I have a hard time keeping them. Oh, okay. For me person, for me personally, I just, I don't want, I don't want to sound like a dickhead or anything like that. But me personally, I just kind of like, eh. For the most part, when I meet people, I'm just like, we're acquaintances. We can be friends, no problem. But don't expect me to hit your phone up until like three months later. Because I'm just, I'm off in a different world by myself. My planet needs me, I must go. You won't hear from me for a long time. Like, like, uh, yesterday I went out for breakfast with a friend and it took us about like three weeks to just get the damn thing. To just like schedule the damn thing because fucking, oh god. So busy. Everything in life, it sucks. When I opened the door, I saw one ugly scene. It's supposed to be with kid. Alright, well, is that the- I think this is the only thing I haven't pressed. It's always active with your friends. My friends always try to be active with me, but I'm just a loner, you know? That's just how I was. Like, uh, I remember, like, one- I remember one year of, like, uh, middle school I had, like, where I just became completely antisocial. And I just didn't talk at all. Just went to school, didn't talk to no one, didn't say nothing, went home. You know, did my thing. Had like the guidance counselor call my house like, Is your child depressed? And it's like, No, I'm not depressed. I just, no, no, no. Just by myself, do my thing. <laughs> Probably suffocate with the arrangement of minds. Oh no, I love being alone. I love it so much. I'm such a loner. It's so weird because I love being alone, but somehow I'm a people person. I don't get it. An ugly scene. What do you mean? The witness has already told us, right? Which makes that question irrelevant. But, but, but I... I limit myself to 17 cups of coffee during the trial. That's the rule. You better limit your numbers of times you take a penalty, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. Or your guts will look like the insides of a chimney. Ashen. Don't make me burn you again, Mr. Wright. I guess I shouldn't have pressed him on that. Guess I'm gonna make that special express after all. So to recap, this ugly scene you saw was... Hmm. Alright, so we... We pressed every... I'm pretty sure we pressed every statement and we got nothing from any of it, right? Well, Nick, what do you think? He's running out of ways to avoid the truth. I need to press him faster. I need to press him faster before it's time to think. Huh. Careful what you press him on, though. So I have to press him on something. Hmm. Do I have to do like a double press? Is that what's going on here? Figured the place wasn't hot already, so I split. I know pressing this one was safe. Yeah. Good job with the coffee. It's <laughs> not Folgers in your cup, sir. <laughs> All right, the tiger's busy cat. Blah blah, ain't no time to call the investigation murder. And yeah, so, what's the match is doing? Okay. No, I just need evidence. Okay, fuck. So I went straight back to my office. I'm gonna assume that one's what we have to use the evidence on. Straight back to his office. Ah. Uh, 10 million is your life every day. Computer virus made by Glenn is potentially worth a million dollars. I'm pretty sure that that's what we can use, right? Figure the place wasn't hot already. He's gonna be split. Guy laid out over the table. Open the door. Ugly scene. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. Hmm. Figure 
figure the place was how ready it was gonna be, so I split. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Crime scene, victim scene, victim scene. Photo at the crime scene. Cup of coffee. Huh. I guess I can use this? Gonna grab something to eat. So I'm hungry. Your bullshit is making me hungry. No. Alright, well that's not it. Witness statement is clearly faulty, your honor. Yikes. God, I, w I wish that every time I got something right, they would just give me some health back so I can feel more assured about myself. Open the door, I saw one ugly scene. You know what, actually? Now that I think about it, that's the lie. That's the lie, because when you open the door, you can't see it. There's a wall there. You liar, you filthy liar. Sir, thank you for shopping at... Here's your caps, here's your receipt. Thank you for shopping at Lid, sir. Lying piece of shit. You're some you're something of a lone collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tiger? No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. And no one escapes the Phoenix's clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, Trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You said you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tiger. From there, your field of vision would have would have covered an area something like this, right? Indeed, the witness could have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that's not possible. If the court would if the court if the court would what I say like that. If the court would back Damn it. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables, it's a tall partition. Why, that's true. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. I can't say the word. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. So, from the entrance of Trespian, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day, because you met with them. Wrong! Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at the table. But the defense just proven that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glenn, but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed that the victim... Uh, what? The real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out of ch charade, 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 charade. Acted out of charade. Yeah, that's the word. Why'd I blink on that? What's wrong with me? That will do. This court has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glenn. Wait, are they trying to- Hold up. Are they trying to tell me that the person who impersonated Glenn was Tiger? Are we doing this? The man's red. <laughs> Your Honor, the man's as red as a cherry. And then impersonated his victim in the performance of Hector Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright, revealed the identity of the criminal to the court. He's, he's a tomato. Obviously, the killer is Furio Tiger. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness. Now that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you don't understand. The tiger is the king of the jungle. So I dare you to say it again. Come on, you got the guts. You can't threaten me, Mr. Tiger. It's the defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright! 
Sounds to me like it must be you, old man. You's got guts, I'll give you that. Mr. Wright, do not leave me to handle this alone. Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Kudok, please help me. Let's just go back over Mr. Kudok's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see just the victim. Oh, no, no, no. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. There's no question about it. She's very con conspiriously... Conspiriously? What? Yeah, that, that's the word, right? That's so weird. Put some white powder in there. She did some crazy shit. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains he saw the accused... The accused? <laughs> I gotta take a moment here. Gotta take a moment. For some reason, I'm losing my ability to read. I don't know what's going on. The fact remains, he saw the accused put the poison into the coffee. Yes. It was the witness who poisoned the coffee. Very impressive, Mr. Gadot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Found your pen at last, right? It was in my pocket. <clears throat> Anyways, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glenn, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glenn was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible that the waitress was also part of the show. What? Do you mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Mr. Mrs. Meh. The defendant, Miss Bride, Bride, what I say, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident, and someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was that? You better not tell me to show any evidence, because I have no idea. <laughs> Who was the waitress? Okay, well now I have an idea. <laughs> Thought he was gonna ask me something crazy. Who's this beautiful young lady? Who's this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee of Tinder Lender. You're making a big mistake. Don't you know who Violet's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Uh, yes, the defendant, Miss Bride. Miss Bride. I keep saying Bride. God damn it. Miss Bird. <laughs> I stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. She was sort of creepy, and she had a kind of cackling laugh. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen the earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when the eardrum was ruptured. In the radio show, he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice, once for real and once for show. And Mr. Furio Tiger, the only person who could have committed the crime, is you. Witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. Sorry? Who's alright? I could do with a guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to charter a jet just to get <laughs> just to get to my meeting now. But I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about? You just got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you miss one more real imp one more wow. But you went eh, eh words. But you missed out one real important thing. But that can't be. I was in the joint that day, and I met the kid too. But I couldn't have poisoned him. You hear? What? Did you really expect us to believe you now, Mister Tiger? What a troublemaker! Troublemaker. Looks like we're gonna need another one for the road.
One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Terespian between yourself and the victim? Success so clearly in view, or is it merely a trick of light? <laughs> yeah, I loaned El some cash, about $100,000. That day we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his pay date, you see? So anyways, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won! Half a million bucks! He got lucky, you know? Real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Now, I see that the principal amount of the loan to Mr. Elge was $50,000. Yeah, well, you got the... You got the... What? The vidge. You got the vidge to take into account. Vidge. What? <laughs> Interest builds up as fast as you know. Faster than... <laughs> that's faster than fast. $1,000 and twice its principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got the half a million just in time. So I ain't no reason to go kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive, hmm. He has to have one, but what is it? Alright. Let's see what we can cook up. We'll see what we can cook up in the kitchen of my little brain here. Make something delicious. The day I was about to have a little chat, kid. Blah, blah, pay date. Tells me he got no way to pay up. About to flatten the guy. He starts screaming. Yes, I won. The way that I had done what she'd done, everything would have been over. So Tiger was meeting Glenn to get his money back. Mr. Elge had just given him the lottery ticket. That would have been the end of it. Yeah. So what's Tiger's motive? His big one. But I'll manage... Okay. I know what his motive is, I just don't know what statement am I presenting it to. Why would he have to poison him? And why did he loan him the money in the first place? Hmm. I think... I think I can... Okay, hold up. I'm about to flatten the guy. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky. You know, real lucky. Ah. Really? Okay. <laughs> Such a burden. A finery risk life and limb. <laughs> Today I was due to have a little chat about the payment date. So anyways, tell me he's got no way to pay up. About to flatten the guy. I'm gonna press this one. Was there anyone else in the restaurant at that time? I don't remember. If there was no one there, I'll wear the ridiculous tiger shirt from a month. Mr. Armstrong, Maggie if I'm right, Viola Cadaverini, were they all in there at that time? So the victim had intended to repay you from his lottery winnings from the beginning. Seems that way to me. But you wouldn't normally accept, uh, expect to win the lottery, would you? The Undying believed that your next role will end the worst, uh, will end the worst losing streak you ever had. That's what's definitely a true gambler. You didn't sound so cool. Don't be tempted, Nick! You haven't got the will power for it. All I know is the kid took a shot and he got lucky in the end. Okay. What you hadn't done when she'd done it would have been over. About to flatten the guy. He starts screaming. Hmm. How much did he have left on his debt? You wanted round you wanted round fingers? About a hundred thousand. That's the whole amount. We're talking about a guy who had fifty-eight cents in his wallet. What? He's telling me he wasn't even gonna pay for the coffee? He certainly seemed to have been a brave man. <laughs> and that guy was smooth, I tell you, real smooth. 
You have your money in less than five minutes. And that's what he said to me. The guy then calls me the Tender Tiger. He was he was skating on thin ice with me. I bet it's only good when your life is an ant. <laughs> what? Huh. They was due to have a little chat with the kid. So, how much were you expecting him to pay you back on that day? What do you think? The whole package. That's a real heavyweight punch. Once a client misses, uh, misses a repayment, you call the whole loan in. You wanna make it my world? <laughs> he said, how about I bring you down to my world? <laughs> okay. Once. And how much was he supposed to pay back every month? 50 bucks. Sounds like Mr. Elge was a real sticky spot. Yeah, $50 a month had never paid the huge loan off. Uh -huh. Hmm. What'd you loan him for? Did he have any way of paying the loan back? The fool was a gambler. He said he couldn't give up until he landed a big win. So I agreed to help him. Help him? I kept hitting him with ideas for ways he could get big winnings. But the guy kept losing. So you were helping him for his sake, or yours. Win through compromise. You help me, I help you. What's the difference? I don't believe this. Nick, would anyone ever loan money to someone they thought was unreliable? Like for example, if it were you, I only loan you five bucks. Hey Maya, I think... I think you've been away from home far long enough. You should go visit. For like, for like, for like a good while. Huh. About to flatten the guy. Was that because he, the guy won the lottery, was his last chance at a big win. You can confirm that this ticket is in the question. That's it. The Million Radio Show started at 1.30 p.m. and runs for 10 minutes. That fixes time for you two to meet with some accuracy. The whole scene was acted out again 30 minutes later. Also, Mr. Kudo would see it. I can still see the kid's face now. I ain't ever gonna forget it. Maya is sp <laughs> spitting facts. It's not my fault that I put a roof over her head, you know? It's just saying. The waitress. You mean... The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? If she had gone and she had gotten away, things would have been bada bang bada boom. <laughs> Overdone with. Maybe I should push a little harder on this. Hmm. How would things would have gone? What do you mean things would have been over and done with? All, all you all there or what? Wait, what? Are yous all there or what? There we go. Oh, I'm talking about the cash. I was here to get my 100 bucks. That's all. Businessman. It's all coming together before the waitress got in the way. As far as I can tell from the witness testimony, other than recoping his loan. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. The tiger's motive, huh? I was after the 1,000. I didn't have any other reason to kill the guy. There we go. That's what we needed. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. So, you just intend to give back the $100,000 uh, that he owed you, correct? Sorry, I got, I got sidetracked for a moment. I was looking at something. <laughs> I loaned the guy the cash, so, that, so that's my right. Unfortunately, for Mr. Elge, Elg, $100,000 wasn't enough to cover it, was it? Huh? About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital, where she underwent surgery. Where'd you get all this info? These medical paper do documents... Wait, wow. These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation costs 
one million dollars. Payment for these expenses was due in December of last year and was paid in full. One million dollars. Preposterous sum. Someone should sue the H the HMOs. Huh. No one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Trite had no choice. Mr. Trite? Why'd I say that? Mr. Tiger had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. Order. Order, I say. You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright. Indeed it did, simply because the injured woman was none other than a Viola Cadaverini. Did you just say Cadaverini? Wow, Godot, you just caught up on that? I said her name like fucking five times already. Bruto Cadaverini, mob boss in charge of all the underworld's activities in the city. Why would you say that out loud? It's televised! God and grandfather to his precious Violet, also known as Viola Cadaverini. I think he was just making it more dramatic. Yeah, well now he incriminated himself. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? Makes sense. You were desperate to acquire the one million dollars Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glenn's life to pay your debt. <laughs> Why did he? <laughs> exactly. It's so like he's like I'm gonna I'm gonna call this man out for being a mob boss on live television. I'm assuming this is televised. Live television out here in the court. If it's not televised, it'll be in the papers. It's a nice little fairy tale, it's right? But even if the witness did need a million dollars, that doesn't tie him to Glenn's murder. Glenn only owed him $100,000 and had no hope of repaying it anyways. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the guy wasn't worth my spit. I don't think so. In fact, the opposite is true. The opposite. Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But, in this case, the very fact that Glenn had no way to repay the money is critical. What? Do you know where you're going with this, Nick? Yeah, Nick, do you know where you're going with this, you son of a bitch? You gotta think outside the box, Maya. Outside the box? It's very straightforward. Mr. Tiger wasn't after the $1,000 at all. It seems that you have logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? What exactly was Mr. Tiger after? He was after the one million dollars. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? It's evidence. That's right, has no idea what he's doing. What? What do you mean? You're way off track, Trite. That wait, what? What the fuck just happened? Guys, come on. Come on, guys. Guys, what the hell? How did I fuck up? He was after the money! How was that a fuck up? I didn't fuck up. I didn't fuck up. They fucked up. They're like, I don't get it. What do you mean he's after the winning ticket? What? What exactly was he after? A winning ticket for half a million dollars found during body search. Oh. Oh! Forgot. No, 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 it's my fault. It's my fault. He- I forgot. I totally- I was so in the moment about the money, I wasn't thinking about the black market. Glenn was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Glenn put in order to borrow the money. Here to explain how skills can be used as collateral to secure a loan trite. He had the skill to create a computer virus, and so he did. A virus known as MC Bomber. 
Tickets not enough. Yeah, I thought. Eh. Listen, in my mind, I always thought the ticket was a million. Forgot. Forgot. It was half a million. Forgot, okay? Listen. Thousands, millions, hundreds, they're getting spit out each time. Ain't nobody said nothing about no half. <laughs> okay? Uh, a computer virus is programmed that wrecks havoc on the inside of the computer. A computer? What does <laughs> what what does one of those do? I guess the beard the beard isn't the only part of the honor the honor? Only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. Mr. Tiger, you couldn't have couldn't have cared less about the $100,000, isn't that right? All you cared about was one thing, the virus. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tiger's still, uh, sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glenn had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tiger knew it. But, then a miracle happened. The kind of, the kind that Mr. Tiger would prefer to say never happened, but he can't. And neither can I. The lottery win. Exactly. At the 11th hour, Glenn won half a million dollars on the lottery which left Mr. Tiger with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. Put a little bit of that twinkle dust in there. Give him something to really scream about. <laughs> so he resorted to a le legitimate, illegitimate means. Oh, words. That's crazy. He murdered Glenn and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tiger posed as Glenn, while Viola Cadaverini played the role as Miss Bird. And then, they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one can pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef would have kept in the dark about this. But Mr. Armstrong was in it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tiger's plan. <laughs> All you need is a little bit of pixie dust. You need faith, trust, and some of that twinkle dust. You's got- you's put on a good show, Spikey. If you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid, created a witness, and framed someone? If I did something crazy like that, I leave- I leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. You do. Despite your appearance, you're very careful. And that's why you took- you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright. Gotta give to Tiger. This is 5,000 IQ, 5-head five, five plan. <laughs> Interesting. What? 5,000 IQ. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you feel it's all in? What was the trick you said Mr. Tiger performed to frame the accused? Oh yeah? He made weenies. He made weenies out of all of you. With this badge. What on earth is that? What an insulting thing anyone could be fooled by. What, <laughs> what an insult to think that anyone could be fooled by such a child's imitation. Consider yourself. <laughs> Consider yourself and Wow. Ugh. Insulted. I didn't say the word for some reason. I, I said it. I said the word. Forgot it. Said it again. You didn't just pose as the victim on the day of the question. In question, a month ago in this very court, you posed as me. What? Tiger, that genius. <laughs> the truth. What? The witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. 
Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here this very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disrepute. Dis eh! Disreputable, shabby defense I've ever seen. Words. Big words. Big words hurt. Can you, pr can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man? Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Hmm. Hey. Forget about it. Hey, forget, forget about it. I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Have you no pride, sir? This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, right? Here in court, we deal with people's lives. Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor! Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now, however. I preside over this court as the judge with, with, the, vested power, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. Ah, oh, you're a piece of shit! I hate you, judge! No. Okay. If the defense had no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tiger are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we come so far. You say he impersonated Glenn. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up in the murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Come on! Gumshoe, where are you? <laughs> Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get mauled, you got that? All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. As <laughs> much as it seems bullcrap, the judge can't be swayed by memory. <laughs> that is a fact. It is a fact. But he can be swayed by someone going like, Hey man, he ain't do it. And the judge goes, Yeah, you're right, he ain't do it. But I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. Alright. If I just had one more piece of evidence, one more piece of evidence, then maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. Because the judge is a bro. He is a bro. <laughs> you don't see it, but behind, behind his desk, he has a bunch of Mountain Dews and fucking Doritos. And the latest copy of the latest Call of Duty game. You know what I mean? He's sitting there. He's, right, he's waiting. This witness, uh, this witness's cross-examination is over. You're free to go, Mr. Tiger. Gumshoe! Is that you? Please tell me it's you. Your Honor, sir. Look at him! Oh, that's the face of a hero. Detective! Detective Gumshoe! Sorry it took so long, pal. I stake, I staked everything on this. My badge, the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too. What is it, detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. What? January 8th. 2.48 p.m. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? About the print, pal, from the, from the medicine bottle. Oh, so? Do you know who the print belongs to now? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. So, tell us. They're the tigers, right? I knew it. <laughs> you bet. Clear as crystal, all over the bottle. They're Furio Tiger's paw prints, all right. That's great. We got him now, Nick. What's wrong with you? You hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on the line for this, Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... 
It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on the bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that Tiger put poison in Glenn's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that, he's, that his prints are on this bottle really doesn't make any difference now. I knew it. Great. No matter how hard I try, I never... I'm never of any use. Aww. It doesn't prove that he poisoned them. Aww. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's alright. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Detective? Maggie! You've been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. Okay. Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get this evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. drink of my iced tea. It's been sitting here, getting warmer. And I just spilled some on me. That's great. Just spilled some iced tea on me. That's fucking fantastic. I'm amazing. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor. I grant you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yeah. Yep. Decisive evidence. Don't keep us all in suspense, Trite. Show us. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been... I ain't been to no court before. Lion ass. I ain't been to no court before. It wasn't me. But usually, I sure know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak. Uh, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed up into a corner here. But maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present the final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Ah. Uh, here's the bottle. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's? Your Honor. Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However... Interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tiger. What? But Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone here knows what this bottle contains, except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints are on that pansy looking bottle? Is that what you're saying? Well, what the hell is it anyways? A phony trial, a phony lawyer, a phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Mr. Tiger, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why, because it contains... Potassium cyanide. The bottle contains potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide. The poison used to murder Mr. Uh, Glenn, Your Honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tiger, we found your prints. 
I should have chose oil. Maybe. If I was going to be funny about it. Well, how do you explain that? You made a good clown. You know that? What? You ain't never going to get this to stick. You just make me laugh now. You think a cheap, a cheap bluff like that is going to fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Mr. Wright. That ain't no bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no. This is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger. You're using... <laughs> you're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown, and it was made of glass. That cheap piece of trash don't look nothing like it. Wow. Wow. You're just a... You're a fucking genius. I love it. <laughs> Bat said the same thing. We detected it. We're both like, fucking genius move. Got him. Ladies and gentlemen of the court. We got him. Why's everybody gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this, <laughs> is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. The bottle the cyanide was in. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy looking suit fool you, fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell the guy, <laughs> tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out? Don't you realize what you just said? what I say? what I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. But just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in the courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. But you don't know. You don't know who you're messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. You think I'm gonna let someone, some jumped up suit, get the better of me? Sure. The last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with the phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. He's a phony. A big fat phony. He's transcending space and time. What if he just died right there? What? What's going on? It looks like a blackout. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well done, Trey. Oh my god. And what happened? <laughs> he's just wearing a mask and he gets like a voice modifier. And he's like, well done, Trey. I saved my 17 cup of coffee just for you. Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. <laughs> to be honest, you'd probably be put into a white collar prison. <laughs> I can't write. What do you mean you can't write? Listen, you can't write, I can't read. That's how it goes. <laughs> the bigger beast, the greater the glory. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe. God, I, just, I want to punch you in the face for saying that, Judge. But if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Now then, how are things going with Mr. Tiger, Mr. Gadot? He's, in, he's being arrested on suspicion of murder of Glenn, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, he managed to... Re re rectify, rectify, that's the word. For some reason, I couldn't. Uh. We managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bear was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. She can sue. <laughs> yes, she was. In the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. 
His very, he very nearly got away with everything. If it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. If it wasn't for you and your meddling fortune teller or psychic or spirit medium, whatever she is. Tiger's truly a frightening criminal. The truly frightening one is the defense attorney over there. Good time. Well, I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant Maggie Bird not guilty. That is all. This court is adjourned. If it wasn't for the If it wasn't for that spiky head lawyer and top knot chick over there, I would have gotten away with it too. <laughs> Mr. Roy, I I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick. In the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around. Wait. It's raining outside my window now. Huh. If my power goes out, blame the rain. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony, then? Huh? Oh, well, I was... Well, guess I'll be heading off, then. See you around. What up, detective? He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even any use. Oh, thanks for the follow, Bat. <laughs> it's greatly appreciated. But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. Should help Gumshoe out. It's clear. It's clear he needs it. Maggie, you know Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you through all this. I want to believe that, sir. But on the first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me. That's why. He thought I had done it. I gotta prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know, I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. How about a box full of weenies? Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. That's a present from Detective Gumshoe, made with tender names with ton of love. How long have we been holding on to that box for? Has it been like a day? Weenie Gaming, Weenie Hut Gaming. <laughs> you say you lost weight and he was worried about you. He fucking detective said I like him plump and juicy. Fatten her up. I actually really like weenies. You know? Did you guys just hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. When aren't you hungry? Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? Aww, why is it so, why is it so bright? <laughs> it looks nice, but why is it so bright? Who, who, who kicked up the brightness on this picture? For what reason? So how is it, Maggie? It's really good. It's not bright. It is bright. Like, the gamma on the fucking picture is, like, up. It has, like, a bright tint over it. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start.
We will find out on the next episode of Pokemon. And then the fucking to be continued square just pops up. Recipe for... <gasps> oh my god, look how fancy he is. Look at that fancy boy. A brand new episode has been added. Turnabout Beginnings. It's pure dread. I don't know, man. People told me... People told me that Clannad was sad and depressing, and we we played it for a stream, and it was it was just it was just whatever, I guess. I'm a chef, chef too.